we're going to be looking at the uh, presentation today going over the new invoice importer feature. I'm going to kick it off in, a, in a, another minute here. We're going to, but just in case, uh, if you could raise your hand, please, just by clicking on the little hand symbol on your window to, just to make sure that you can both see me and hear me okay. There you go. Thank you, Lori. I appreciate that. So I will assume that uh, everybody is hearing me okay. Sounds good. Just wait another couple of minutes here or seconds. All right, so let's go ahead and kick this thing off. Uh, it is uh, 9.02. Again, my name is Charles Owen from Paladin. been with the company about nine years. I manage business alliances for the company and I enjoy doing webinars occasionally. Obviously, the benefit of these webinars are to help get you more proficient on Paladin. And today, we're going to be learning about the new invoice importer feature that has been recently added, which I'm super excited about. It's been required for a long time, and it's going to help a lot of folks out. So um, with that, we have uh, Chad. And Chad, hopefully, you've hit the record button by this time so we can record this. This will be rebroadcasted at any time at paladinpointofsale.com slash webinars, where you can see this information. The um, next week, we will be doing another one next week as well, and um, we'll discuss what that is at the end of this. This presentation today should be about 15 minutes. It's really not a whole lot to cover, but it is some really good content. I put it in advance on this because it's one of those features that not everybody's going to be using. But if you do any selling of items on the internet, or if you do any selling of items in any other systems and want to consolidate that and bring it into Paladin, you can do that now using the new invoice importer feature. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. The first slide is our agenda. We'll go over the purpose. Why does this feature even exist? Next, we'll look at the different templates that's provided by uh, Paladin for both importing and exporting and what happens, what it looks like after you've done the import, and then after that, um, how to import invoices, the actual how to do it, how to do it, and then I'll do a presentation in, uh, in Paladin. And that's it, that's what we'll cover today. So starting with the purpose again, importing sales from other systems, combining virtual web store sales with Paladin, and maintaining, and this helps benefit you if you are selling items through a website, you're distributing it through your store, and or you have another system in place, like maybe an oil and gas system that you want to uh, consolidate the revenue and all of the accounting, you can do that as well with this feature. So that's kind of the purpose of the invoice importer feature. And by the way, I, I forgot if I mentioned, I'm actually in the Hardware Hank store in Anaconda, Montana today. And uh, that's what you see behind me is uh, folks uh, going live. This is their very first day of go live. They've been on the system about an hour and a half. And I've left them, I've abandoned them to do this webinar. It's kind of cool that they can actually take the ball and run with it only after that minimal amount of time. All right, getting back to the presentation. So the import-export uh, invoice template. And this is produced inside Paladin. Very simply done. We just you just go into the maintain screen, I'll go through and I'll walk through this process with you. And it produces an Excel spreadsheet, which is all set and ready to go for your import. There are seven fields, and uh, you can see them here. You've got a transaction number, a date and time, the actual part number, alternate part number if you wish, the description, quantity, and retail price. That's the information that comes down. All right. You are allowed to use duplicate invoice numbers. The, uh, the trick with the invoice numbers is what you want to do, and that invoice number is the transaction number. And what you want to do with that is coordinate that with each um, invoice. For example, if one invoice had two items on it, you want, want to make sure that that transaction number is duplicated for those two items. That way they'll be consolidated when you, uh, when you look up the uh, import invoice. The uh, sample report import template, as I mentioned, is available, and I'll show you how that is done momentarily. So that's what the import export template looks like. So what the result, what happens 
and what's it look like after you've done an import? Well, just like recalling invoices, you can also read from from uh, cash sales or from customer sales. You can also uh, see this on the historical or history tab, and it's listed as sold to import. All you do is double double click the transaction, and it can create and render right at that moment in time an invoice showing the items that shared that same transaction number that I spoke of. The, uh, so how, how does it work, right? So what are the steps involved? This is a really good slide here because it goes through each of the steps. Step one is you go into maintain. So if you go into Paladin, um, you go maintain, and then you're going to select data viewer. But after that, after that, you're going to going to hit the invoices tab. There's an invoices and ignore the invoices. Uh, I think that says input or import. Can't see from here. Uh, it says import. So it's not that one. It's only the one that the tab that says invoices. Once you get to invoices, then you're going to click on the tab that says import. All right, that'll take you to this screen. What next? Well, next, you want to generate a template that you can use for your invoices. And you can do that right here. And that produces the Excel file that, that you see down below here. Number four, that's what it produces. Then you're going to create your import file. You can either import through an Excel. This is how you're going to do it, right? you got to get your items into this Excel spreadsheet. I'm sure there's some sort of a exporter in, in whatever other system or website that you're using that will put it in this column and row format. That's necessary. Okay. Uh, after that, the next step is to click on the, uh, the three dots here to the right of the read file. And what that will do is it will actually allow you to select the file that you're importing and run it through a validation and a test. That's very, very key and important. So you click, once you've identified the file, then you click the next button, which is number six here, and that says read file. It's going to read the file. If there's an error with that file, it's going to tell you right now. It won't import it. It must go through this validation step before you actually do the process to make sure that this file is valid. After that, then just hit process, and you're done. That's all there is to it. I'll walk you through that process momentarily. Uh, if you want to learn more about this feature, you can always go to our knowledge base. There's a couple of articles, how to create an invoice transaction file that you can import, and how to import an invoice transaction file into file and point of sale. Those are both in the knowledge base. And then also, if you look at the splash screen when you first log into Paladin, there is the, uh, under new invoice importer, all you need to type really is just invoice importer, and it will uh, display on that features browser full documentation with screenshots, it's really good. All right, so let me um, let me leave the presentation now, and I want to bring up uh, I want to bring up the Paladin system. All right, and I'm going to show you how this is done in Paladin. So again, if we go to let's get my mouse going here. All right, so if we go to maintain data viewer. And in here, we're going to the Invoices tab and select Import. Now, when we hit this Export button, a couple of things you have to notice here is it, it's going to give you different file templates. You can either get and import XML or Excel. Excel is just easier for most normal people. Um, XML is doable as well if you want to do that. But if we hit Export right at this moment in time, what it's going to do it's going to produce an Excel file. I'll bring that over here so we can see it. And here's that same sample file. So this is an actual Excel spreadsheet with the headers on top that you require for the import. And you just populate you just populate the tables, right? Just populate the tables, put the part numbers in there, the descriptions. Again, you should be exporting this from your other system. And then you can apply their transaction or invoice number to the actual items. And notice here I have um, two with the transaction number one, two with the transaction number two. All right? That's what they come as default. But again, this is just a template. You can get rid of all this content, 
just by highlighting it, selecting delete, and putting your own fields or your own uh, columns and applying it to this template. Very, very cool feature. All right. Once you do that, you're going to hit the um, the three dots here, the ellipsis, and we're going to identify where the file is. Now, I happen to have a sample import file that I've brought in, or that I will be bringing in, and it's located on my desktop, so I just selected it, and I can hit read file. Now, notice it's going to do a validation. Validation says I've got two invoices here with a couple items in there, and it looks good. I mean, it would air out. You would see it would be so obvious if it didn't didn't come across. And when you're ready, just hit process. And now, that quick, I just imported those items. So let me step away here for a second because I uh, have the numbers that I just imported on the separate list there. So if I go in and I search for these items, I can go to inventory and the first number is one four nine seven four seven eight. And if I go in and look at my um, history sales figures, you'll notice I have two. The one that was imported um, well they were they were both imported here on May first, so this obviously isn't one that I just brought in. Um, but it's, it's going to show you this is exactly how it's going to display. And if I want to print that, I can just hit the uh, double click on that particular line item, and it will produce an, an actual receipt or invoice. I'll show you what that looks like because I've got it here on my other system. So there you go. So it shows the two products there. And it says this is an import coupon. That's how it's listed. And there's my invoice number, invoice number one. So there you have it. So any questions? Because this is pretty much, I'm on my mouse here, it's difficult running in a different environment here. All right. So Chad, are you still on the line with us? Are there any questions? I'm still here, and no, there are no questions. All right, again, this feature isn't for everybody. It's really required for uh, for those who are selling products in the web store. Maybe you want to keep the inventory in sync. Maybe you want to bring the revenue from that store into your Paladin system so you can view it in the brick and mortar system. It does list it out separately as an import coupon. So if you actually looked at the revenue report, you would find that that would actually show up as a um, as a as an import coupon. So we do separate it out for you so you can choose to either incorporate or not incorporate that into those daily figures. All right. Well, I'm done unless anybody has anything for me. Next week, we are uh, doing a, a webinar on Tuesday at 9 a.m. Pacific time. It will be on PO receive mode. So there's a new RF function. Currently, you have four. This has a fifth one, and it enables you to actually go to the old school model of grabbing the gun and receiving the products off the truck and comparing that to your purchase order. So we'll learn more about Carol. that next week. Yeah. Can I interrupt for a second? We have a question from uh, Kate that says, we are currently do not have online sales. Where do we find the new import coupon when the sales are made? I don't know if I understand the question fully. Um, does that come through understandable to you? Well, if you if you don't have a store, you don't have another method, another way that you're selling products out of your store, then it's it's not relevant, really. That's really what this feature is intended for. I can't think of another reason why you would use this feature. And yeah, I kind of don't under, understand the question either. And that was from Kate. Kate, I'll tell you what. I just unmuted you. And you can speak if you're not shy. Even if you are, you can speak. <laughs> or not. That's fine, too. Maybe she has her personal phone on, um, on mute. But she did ask another question here. She's typing a little more that said, how do I know when a customer has placed an order if when we were to go online with her sales, I'm assuming? Ah. 
So that depends on whatever system you choose for your online store. It really doesn't have a whole lot to do with, with Paladin. Um, normally, when you're doing store sales, you will be able to go in and get a report at the end of the day, what's sold. Uh, in a lot of cases, they have an export feature that will enable you to export that information, and that's where we would come into play, where you would format that into this particular Excel template format and uh, and and bring it into Paladin. I know Another way many of, web services uh, send emails when orders come yeah. through. That, that, that was my number. Yeah, that was my number two. So the second way is they'll shoot you an email when something sells. And again, this is only relevant if you're selling and distributing products from your store. If it's coming from another warehouse or a different location where you're not tracking inventory, from an inventory perspective, it's not that it's not critical at all. But from maybe from uh, consolidating revenue, it could be. It, it just all depends on, on what you want to do. One more question from Lori, Lori here, Charles. Um, can sure. you import from another point of sale system other than online is her question. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Um, there is another scenario I know of where a customer has an oil and gas system and they do all their oil and gas in that system because it tracks the sale of their, you know, it keeps up with the with the different prices and it tracks the sales and they have to process it through their POS system. But at the end of the day, they may want to, or the end of the month, they may want to consolidate that revenue that they received from the oil and gas and import that in. That is also workable. Now, one caveat with that is it doesn't actually tie it today to a customer record. So, for example, if you're doing um, fleet uh, billing or fleet account statements and, uh, and you're doing that in your other system, you can't bring that information into Paladin and run it through that account. That is the next step, however, in this particular feature. We are adding a feature that enables you to tie these import, imported invoices to a particular house account. That right there is going to be huge because then you can use it um, and you can consolidate your accounts receivables. So if you are using two different systems, like in the case of an oil and gas system um, and or uh, uh, a website, you can consolidate all that into um, uh, an actual person's account. Also, maybe for pharmacy, if any of you are pharmacists out there, you might have a pharmacy system where you might want to do the same. You maybe do other types of sales in the pharmacy system. You want to get those sales, consolidate them, put them all into Paladin. And again, in the future, when we have the capability to tie the invoice with the actual account, you can consolidate the uh, account in as well. Ready? All right. Very well, good. I think that's guys. all the questions we have right now. I appreciate it. We really thank you for your time today. And again, coming from uh, an economy Montana, it's absolutely gorgeous, beautiful, warm, sunny. It's supposed to be in the 80s today here. And uh, I thank you all for your time. And, and until next time, we'll catch you later.